Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video has been kind of a long time in the making. I've known that I wanted to talk about this topic, this subject for a while now, but I really wanted to do the research, put in the work, if you will, to really try and grasp all of the different aspects of it and all of the different perspectives. When I first started really getting into YouTube and watching trans people on YouTube, I came across a couple YouTubers and a couple different, you know, ideologies, if you will. But the one that stood out to me the most and the one that honestly seemed the most problematic to me was the whole trans medicalist perspective. I've never been the type of person to be like, this is what you need to think, this is what you need to believe, this is what you should do, except when it comes to transphobes. Then I'm like, maybe don't think that, maybe don't be like that. But with gender theory and different theories like that, especially when it comes to, you know, how somebody views their own identity, I've never really been the type of person to be like, well, no, that's not how it is. You shouldn't think like that. Like you can think of your own identity however you want. You can have your own perspective about yourself. That's totally fine. But I feel like with trans medicalists, they don't really stop there. They kind of use it as a way to invalidate other people's identities, specifically non-binary identities. And I am not about it. I'm not about it. So yeah, for today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what transmedicalism is. I'm gonna talk about the goals that transmedicalism claims to have. And then I'm gonna talk about the reasons why people may, you know, end up being into the more transmedicalist viewpoint. And finally, I'm gonna end the video talking about the dangers of transmedicalism and why I think that we really need to be careful when we, you know, hold these perspectives. I make new videos here on my channel twice a week. So if you guys are not yet subscribed and you would like to be, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you as always. I'm so patient. I'm not patient at all, but for you guys, I will be. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to keep us up to date with me as possible. I've been trying to be a lot more active on my Instagram, especially my Instagram stories. So definitely go check me out on there. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys like the work that I do here on my channel and you would like to donate, the link for that is down below as well. And finally, before I start, I just want to let you guys know that a portion of today's video is sponsored by Honey. So thank you so much, Honey. We'll talk about them a little bit later. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into today's video. So transmedicalism is a theory of gender, you could say, that kind of just focuses on the existence of dysphoria. You'll often hear them say things like trans identities are only valid if you plan on medically transitioning, if you plan on, you know, taking hormones, having surgery, stuff like that, that if you don't have gender dysphoria, then being trans is a choice, which I can understand how they could come to that conclusion, but I do not agree. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say I don't agree. Your gender identity is who you are and whatever path that you take to find out who you are is valid with or without the existence of pain. Of course, there are variations and different perspectives within the trans medicalist community, but most of the time they also do not believe in the existence of non-binary people, especially non-binary people that do not experience dysphoria. They argue that there's no medical basis for being non-binary because, you know, it's not one of the two biological sexes. So how could you identify as not one of the two sexes? They focus on the difference between the male and the female brain, and they kind of use that as the reason to why they're transgender. They're like, oh, well, I was born with a male body, but a female brain or vice versa. I've seen these studies. I know like where this kind of idea comes from, but like, that's not exactly what the study says. There's no such thing as a male brain and a female brain. There are some structures that are different on average, but of course there's a lot of variation and a lot of overlap. Riley J. Dennis actually has an amazing video on this. I definitely recommend you guys go check that out down below. I just do not have the time to go into all the different studies and stuff like that, but they they did. They went all out. It's great. It's a great video. Two of the largest trans medicalists on YouTube, or you know, they were on YouTube anyways. Ooh. The two that you're probably the most familiar with are Blair White, and Calvin Guerra. Calvin Guerra, or Too Cute Smasher 9000, as Natalie Wynn referred to him, in a video talking about his perspectives, claims that you need dysphoria to be transgender. But not only that, but also that not everybody that claims to have dysphoria actually does. Blair White in that Vice video that I'm sure you've all seen claimed that being trans is having gender dysphoria and acting on it to live your life as a transsexual. That includes hormone replacement therapy, surgeries, anything like that, any sort of medical transition. In that Vice video, Blair actually went so far as to call out a non-binary person in that video and say, you are not trans. So just explicitly just calls people out and says that, no, if you don't experience this for you the way I do, then you're not transgender. If you don't live your life the way I do, you're not transgender and you're making us all look bad, blah, blah, blah. Trans medicalists often argue that gender is not a social construct because it's not a choice. Your gender identity is not a choice, which I mean, I do agree with gender identity is not a choice, but that's not to say that gender is not socially constructed. Like those things are not synonymous. So yeah, that was kind of a lot. That was kind of a little bit all over the place. But the main takeaway that you need to know about the trans medicalist perspective is that they think that you need gender dysphoria to be trans. Before we continue with the video, I do want to take a second to talk about today's sponsor. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a low key shopaholic. It's embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. But with everything going on in the world, online shopping is pretty much the only thing that I feel safe enough to do. And that is where today's sponsor, Honey, comes in. Honey is a free browser extension that will scour the internet for you and find promo codes and automatically test them when you're checking out. Honey 
money has honestly become integral in my shopping experience because I don't got time to scour the internet. I just, I just don't, I got more shopping to do. So to get Honey on your computer, it's super easy. It's literally just two clicks. And then once it's installed and you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey will pop up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. So I actually had to re-up on some of my makeup products recently and I took a little screenshot. Look how much money I saved. I've actually had Honey installed for years now. I use it literally all the time. It has over 17 million members and has saved people over two billion dollars. They have all kinds of stores on there from beauty to tech to clothing and even food delivery which like, come on, who doesn't like a little food delivery every now and then or every day? We won't know, we don't gotta talk about it. So yeah, if you have a laptop, if you have a computer, you should really just put Honey on it. Like it's so simple. It's literally two clicks and then you're saving money, period. You can get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com slash Samantha. I have my own little personal code. Again, it's joinhoney.com slash Samantha. Make sure that you put the slash Samantha. I want them to know that I sent you, okay? Thank you. So yeah, thank you so much to Honey for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into transmedicalism, fun. So now that we have a little bit more of a grasp on what transmedicalism means, I wanna talk about some of the goals that they claim that they you know, have in mind. So one of the main goals of being a transmedicalist that I've noticed specifically from Bra Braille, from Braille White, is she believes that framing a transgender identity through that medical perspective is the only way to gain acceptance and gain greater understanding to people that, you know, aren't transgender. I feel like for the more casual person that is a transmedicalist, someone not as extreme as Blair White, I feel like that goal might be more of a subconscious thing, which I mean, I do understand and I do respect the effort to try to gain acceptance from the average person, but it's not worth it when you have to throw other people under the bus. Like, are you really doing a good job of gaining acceptance if you're only gaining acceptance for part of the community? In my opinion, no, I feel like that's not a, like a good method. I feel like there's better ways. Another one of the goals that they claim to have is the protection of young trans trenders. They argue that these trans trenders aren't even trans and they're just gonna end up regretting it. So, you know, we should, we should tell them that they're not trans. Okay, all right. <laughs> they say that they're concerned that these young people are going to transition and end up regretting it. Which like, if you're really concerned about people regretting their transition, bullying is not the way to go. Maybe advocate for better gender therapy, better gender, you know, care in general. Something that Blair White said in one of her videos was that these people are just gonna end up detransitioning in three years and then she would have to live with the consequences of their actions. I feel like they're really not interested in protecting these young children, but rather just protecting their own image, which actually kind of perfectly leads into the next goal of the trans medicalist perspective, you could say. In my opinion, transmedicalists kind of use this transmedicalist standpoint to distance themselves or, you know, separate themselves from people that they think make them look bad. They say, I'm not like the trenders. I'm not like those crazy trans trenders. Please, please accept me. It's kind of sad, actually. It really is. An example of this comes again from Miss Blair White. She says that she's advocating for a return to a less hysterical definition of what being trans is because it's in the interest of actual trans people. Girl. So it's just this whole idea that non-binary people or people that don't medically transition are somehow hurting her. People who are transphobic are gonna be transphobic anyways. They may respect you more because you're closer to their ideal, but they're still gonna see you as a boy that wants to be a girl. Like you're not accomplishing anything. And also this whole thing of like, it's hurting actual trans people. Non-binary people are trans. By definition, they are trans. The definition of trans is not identifying as the gender that you were assigned at birth or the sex that you were assigned at birth. They, that's, yes, that's, that's how they identify, not as the gender that they were assigned at birth, period. Now you may be thinking, why do they do this? Like, isn't there an easier way? Isn't there a better way to gain validity from the average person or to protect these young trans trenders as they call them? The answer is yes, obviously. Again, I don't wanna put words in other people's mouths, but in my opinion, I feel like being a trans medicalist is almost like a coping mechanism for them. It's a way of rationalizing their trans identity because they can say, oh, there's something medically wrong with me. I'm not crazy, trust me, there's just something medically wrong with me. I feel like for a lot of trans medicalists, they have some pretty bad internalized transphobia, which tells them that being trans means that you're crazy or it's something that you should be ashamed of, which I mean is totally understandable. We've been taught by media, we've been taught by society that being trans is weird, it's gross, that you're crazy, that you're delusional, even sometimes that you're evil. So I totally understand, like who would wanna be seen as weird or gross or evil or anything like that. So when they frame a trans identity as being medical, they can escape those labels and it gives them something to blame their transness on. So like I was saying earlier, however you see yourself, however you interpret your trans identity, that's totally fine, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But oftentimes trans medicalists don't use it to validate their own identity, but they use it to invalidate other people's identities. That's where I have a problem. It gives trans people and cis people ammo to effectively make other people feel invalidated. They can say, oh, well, you're not medically transitioning, you're not doing this, 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 and this. Well then you, you must not actually be trans. Like, you're just crazy, you're just a trans trender then. Which, 
Obviously, it's bad. Obviously, we do not want to be attacking people for their identity. You know what I'm saying? This medicalist frame also leads people to think that they can only identify as one of the two sexes, and it leads people to try to pass perfectly and completely blend in as cisgender because that's the only way that they'll be validated. It teaches binary trans people that to be successful, real trans person, then you need to have all the surgeries, you need to do all of these different things, and you need to look just like a cisgender person or you're not complete. And that other people that don't have all the surgeries or whatever, they're not complete either. Which I'm sure you can understand why that's toxic, you know what I mean? Trans people are complete, period. Surgery and even hormones are not always the right path for even binary trans people. And the fact of the matter is not everybody is binary. And by forcing conformity into a binary presentation, you're pushing those young gender non-conforming people and those young non-binary people to medically transition when that might not be the right path for them. So if you really care about protecting these young transgenders or whatever you wanna to refer to them as, then maybe don't make them feel like they need to have surgery. Just, just a suggestion. Something else that often happens to this trans medicalist standpoint is the projection of dysphoria onto other people or this whole idea of secondhand dysphoria. You hear things like, oh, that beard should make you dysphoric. Like, you must not actually be trans then. Blair White herself expresses that she does not want to have bottom surgery. Does that make her less of a trans woman? Of course not. This whole ideology just turns trans people against each other. And a perfect example of this is Calvin's video on Brennan Beckwith. I'm sure that you guys know all about this right now. I don't even have to get into it, but basically he just made this whole video mocking Brennan and saying that like, oh, you can't be trans if you don't experience the dysphoria that I experienced. And basically just gave his whole audience things to attack Brennan for. And that's exactly what they did. Brennan's videos were over flooded with hate comments and things saying that they weren't actually trans and that they were just a transgender, blah, blah, blah. Brennan actually did a whole series of videos about this whole, you know, this whole situation, which I definitely recommend that you go check out. They claim that this bullying that was coming from Calvin and all of Calvin's followers hurt their mental health, their confidence, and it also destroyed their safe place. So for them, YouTube was a safe place to go and express how they were feeling and express, you know, what they were going through, whatever. But after Calvin made that video on them, they had to totally deplatform themselves because of the consistent bullying that they were experiencing. And not only that, it shattered their sense of safety and security in real life trans spaces as well. When all this happened, literally nobody cared. Everyone was on Calvin's side. Everyone was supporting Calvin, laughing at Brennan. And it, like, I remember seeing this video and I was like, what the fuck? Like who are, like what is happening? In a video that Calvin actually did with Blair White, they went onto TikTok and started making fun of people on TikTok, which was actually like really weird to me because most of the time they make fun of trans people who don't surgically transition. But in this video, they made fun of a person that chose to medically transition and not go on hormones and said that it was a fetish and that it was malpracticed by the doctor. Like you just can't win with these people, I swear. And then there was another person that only transitioned socially and they said, oh, you didn't transition thoroughly enough or you didn't change thoroughly enough. You're not actually trans. And then a direct quote from them says, if you're happy, be happy. But I can't look at that and say it's a woman. Oh my God, these are literally the same fucking transphobic ass talking points that we've heard from cisgender people for years. Brennan, as well as the other trans people that Calvin and Blair consistently made fun of, they were not even the only ones that suffered from this. Of course, when it's happening to you, you're gonna feel really, really shitty about yourself. And I feel so awful for these people that had to go through this torment from these giant trans creators. But also when you see it happening to other trans people, not only does it encourage you to be trans medicalist as well because you wanna avoid all of those mean things that people are saying, but it stops everyone, even binary trans people from exploring their gender because they're afraid that it's gonna hurt actual trans people. I have close friends that express concerns to me that they're not trans enough and that they're making the trans community look bad because of assholes like them. Like I've been saying throughout this video, if you're a trans medicalist and you use it to validate your own identity, you do you. I mean, I feel like there's some better theories out there that could, you know, more accurately describe what's going on. But I mean, you do you, that's fine. However, if you're using it to invalidate other people, bitch, I, I, I do not like you. That's all I'll say, I do not like you. But yeah, you guys, that's pretty much the gist of transmedicalism. I hope I didn't miss anything. There was, I have like 10 pages of notes here that I tried to compile into a video, but I'm sure there are some things that I missed, some perspectives that I missed and some, you know, dangers and goals or whatever that I missed. So feel free to, you know, add on down below in the comments. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up or subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. Thank you so much, honey, for sponsoring today's video. And yeah, I love you guys. If you have been the target of transmedicalism or anything like that, I'm so sorry. I love you, you are valid, you are, you know, perfect. I don't even know what to say. But yeah, you guys, other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in next week's video. Bye guys.